Most people believe that if they walk consistently, especially every day, their body will eventually respond. The scale should move. The waistline should soften. And yet, for millions of people, especially adults over 35, something feels off. They're doing the right thing, but the result they're expecting never fully arrives. This is where frustration quietly builds. Not because walking doesn't work, but because the body doesn't work the way most people think it does. There is a specific type of fat, buried deep beneath the surface, wrapped around vital organs, that doesn't behave like ordinary body fat. Visceral fat doesn't announce itself. You don't feel it burning. You don't feel it moving. But it actively alters hormones, interferes with insulin sensitivity, and sends inflammatory signals throughout the body. You can look normal on the outside and still carry a metabolic risk on the inside. And here's the part almost no one explains clearly. Walking does not automatically burn visceral fat just because you started moving. There is a precise internal moment when the body decides it is ready to release it. Until that moment arrives, your effort feels honest, but the deeper change hasn't begun yet. For years, we've been taught to believe that effort is the deciding factor. Walk longer, walk faster, push harder. If fat doesn't go away, the assumption is simple, you're not doing enough. But the human body doesn't respond to effort the way machines do. It responds to signals. And when those signals don't align, more effort can actually work against you. When you begin walking, your body immediately looks for the fastest and safest source of energy. That source is almost always glucose, pulled from the bloodstream or muscle glycogen. This process is efficient, familiar, and protective. From a biological perspective, burning fat, especially visceral fat, is not the priority yet. The body first asks a different question. Is this environment stable or is it stressful? If movement feels rushed, breathing becomes shallow, or heart rate spikes too quickly, stress hormones like cortisol rise. Elevated cortisol tells the body to conserve deeper energy reserves, not release them. This is why so many people walk faithfully, break a sweat, and still feel stuck. They're working harder, but their physiology is still operating in protection mode. Understanding this reframes the entire experience. The issue isn't discipline, it's timing. And once you understand how the body decides when to shift gears, walking begins to feel very different. What most people don't realize is that the body gives subtle feedback long before visceral fat ever becomes accessible. It's not dramatic and it doesn't feel like a breakthrough. In fact, it often feels like nothing special at all, which is why it's so easy to miss. Early in a walk, the body is still assessing demand. Breathing may be faster. The mind may feel slightly restless. Muscles are active, but energy is still coming from easy, readily available sources. Then, something begins to change. Breathing smooths out instead of accelerating. Your steps fall into a rhythm that no longer feels forced. Heart rate rises, but then steadies instead of climbing endlessly. This stabilization is not a sign that the walk has become easier. It's a sign that your nervous system has stopped interpreting the movement as a threat. That moment matters more than speed or distance, because until your body feels safe, it won't access deeper energy reserves. Many people unknowingly end their walk right as this transition is starting to form. They stop just before the metabolic shift they were hoping to trigger even has a chance to appear. This is the part that quietly changes everything. Walking doesn't transform your metabolism at the moment you start moving. It happens after your body settles into a steady internal state. Once breathing becomes controlled, oxygen delivery improves, and heart rate stabilizes within a moderate range, the body begins shifting priorities. Energy production slowly moves away from quick glucose use and toward fat oxidation. This transition isn't something you feel as effort. There's no sudden burst, no sharp sensation. Instead, there's a sense of ease, as if your body has found a sustainable rhythm. That's because, biologically, it has. Mitochondria respond to this steady demand by increasing their use of fatty acids, and hormonal signals become more favorable for releasing stored energy. This is the metabolic switch most people never realize they're waiting for. Importantly, 
This shift doesn't happen because time has passed. It happens because conditions have been met. When stress hormones remain low and oxygen availability stays high, the body no longer needs to protect its deepest reserves. Only then does visceral fat begin to enter the conversation. At a certain point during a walk, something subtle but profound happens inside the body. There is no signal, no alert, no sensation that announces it. Yet, metabolically, this is the moment where everything shifts. Exercise physiologists often describe it as crossing an internal threshold, the point where fat oxidation begins to contribute more meaningfully to energy production than glucose. Early on, glucose dominates because it's fast and efficient. But glucose is limited. As walking continues at a steady, moderate pace, oxygen uptake becomes more consistent and mitochondrial activity increases. This is when the body quietly redraws its energy priorities. Fat, once held in reserve, begins to play a larger role. Respiratory patterns reflect this change, even if you're not consciously aware of it. Carbon dioxide output shifts, oxygen efficiency improves. Inside the cells, beta oxidation ramps up. What makes this moment so important is that not all fat responds the same way. Subcutaneous fat is relatively accessible, Visceral fat is not. It requires this precise metabolic environment to even become available. That's why walking feels ineffective until it suddenly doesn't. The work was happening beneath the surface long before visible results appeared. This invisible line explains a common frustration. People stop walking because they assume nothing is happening. In reality, they've been approaching the most important phase without realizing it. Crossing this line doesn't feel dramatic, but it marks the beginning of meaningful internal change. One of the biggest misconceptions about walking for fat loss is the belief that speed is the deciding factor. Faster feels productive. Heavier breathing feels effective. But the body doesn't measure effort by pace. It measures it by internal load. And heart rate is the clearest external reflection of that load. When heart rate stays within a moderate range, typically around 50 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, your physiology begins favoring fat as a primary energy source. This zone allows oxygen delivery to match demand without triggering stress responses. Cortisol remains controlled. Insulin sensitivity improves. These conditions are essential for visceral fat to become metabolically accessible. If heart rate climbs too quickly, glucose takes over again. The body interprets the movement as urgency, and shifts back to faster fuel. If heart rate stays too low, metabolic activation is slow, and the fat oxidation machinery never fully engages. Walking sits in a rare middle ground, where the body can work efficiently without feeling threatened. This is why a relaxed but purposeful pace often produces better results than pushing yourself. You're not trying to burn more calories in the moment. You're trying to create the internal state where fat burning is sustainable. Once heart rate stabilizes in this zone, visceral fat is no longer protected. It becomes part of the energy conversation. You don't need a heart rate monitor or a smartwatch to know when your body has entered the fat burning state. Your physiology gives subtle but reliable signals once you know how to listen. One of the clearest indicators is breathing. It becomes deeper and more rhythmic without feeling forced. You can speak in full sentences comfortably, but you're aware that your body is working. This balance tells you oxygen supply and demand are finally aligned. Another sign is the sensation of settling into the walk rather than pushing through it. Your steps feel coordinated. Your shoulders drop. Tension in the neck and jaw eases. This is not fatigue disappearing. It's efficiency taking over. As fat oxidation increases, energy delivery becomes steadier which is why many people notice the walk feels easier after the first several minutes instead of harder. A mild rise in body warmth is also common. This isn't overheating. It's mitochondrial activity increasing as fat begins contributing more to energy production. Some people even notice improved mental clarity or a calmer mood. These changes reflect reduced sympathetic stress and improved blood flow, conditions that allow visceral fat to be released safely. When these signals appear together, you've crossed into the state that makes walking metabolically meaningful. 
Not all fat behaves the same way, and this distinction explains why visceral fat feels so stubborn. Subcutaneous fat, the fat just beneath the skin, is relatively easy for the body to access. It responds earlier to movement and short-term energy demands. Visceral fat is different. It sits deeper, surrounds vital organs, and plays a direct role in hormonal communication. Because of that role, the body is far more protective of it. Visceral fat responds primarily to internal conditions, not effort alone. High cortisol tells the body to hold on to it. Unstable blood sugar signals uncertainty. Poor oxygen delivery limits mitochondrial use. In those environments, visceral fat stays locked away. But when walking creates stability, steady breathing, controlled heart rate, balanced stress hormones, the message changes. The body no longer perceives a threat. It begins reallocating fuel sources in a safer, more strategic way. This is why moderate, sustained walking consistently outperforms sporadic intensity when it comes to reducing visceral fat. The goal isn't to force release. It's to remove the signals that block it. Improved insulin sensitivity, increased blood flow, and enhanced mitochondrial efficiency slowly change how visceral fat behaves. Once those signals shift, visceral fat becomes metabolically available instead of protected. That's when walking stops feeling symbolic and starts producing real internal change. What makes walking truly powerful isn't a single session. It's what happens when the body begins to expect the movement. With regular walking, your physiology adapts in subtle but meaningful ways. Mitochondria increase in both number and efficiency, allowing your cells to rely on fat more readily. Blood vessels become better at delivering oxygen. Hormonal responses grow more stable. Over time, the internal switch toward fat oxidation flips sooner and with less resistance. This is why consistency matters more than intensity. When walking becomes a daily or near-daily habit, your nervous system stops treating it as a novel stressor. Heart rate stabilizes faster. Breathing finds rhythm earlier. Cortisol spikes become less pronounced. The body enters the fat-burning state with less negotiation. What once took 20 minutes might begin happening in 10. Many people underestimate this adaptation because it isn't dramatic. There's no sudden milestone or visible signal that announces it. But internally, the system becomes more cooperative. Visceral fat, once tightly guarded, responds more readily as metabolic conditions improve. Walking shifts from something you have to push through into something your body prepares for in advance. This is the quiet advantage of consistency, and it's what turns walking into a long-term metabolic ally rather than a short-term effort. By now, one thing should be clear. Walking doesn't change your body because you push harder or move faster. It changes your body when your physiology finally aligns with the movement. When breathing steadies, heart rate stabilizes and stress signals quiet down, the body stops resisting and starts cooperating. That's when visceral fat becomes accessible, not through force, but through readiness. This understanding reframes everything. Walking is no longer something you do to punish your body or chase numbers. It becomes a conversation with your metabolism, a steady rhythm that teaches your system it's safe to let go of what it no longer needs. Over time, that partnership reshapes not just body composition, but energy levels, clarity, and long-term health. Sustainable change doesn't come from intensity. It comes from understanding. And when you move in a way your body recognizes as supportive, walking becomes more than exercise. It becomes a metabolic strategy that works with you, not against you. In the next video, we'll explore a habit many people believe accelerates fat loss, but quietly blocks this same metabolic switch.